What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Protego and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a brand new codec, ProRes RAW. So what is it? Well, it's a new codec, like I just said, designed by Atomos and Apple to bring the workflow and ease of use of the industry standard ProRes to the flexibility that you get with raw data. Now, I wanna clear something up about this. It's not a normal raw workflow like you're used to thinking about it. You can't change the color temperature and the ISO specifically. But what it does is gather all of that data so you can use it in post-production. So you have a lot more freedom to push and pull your image and adjust colors when you're in the post side. I plan on doing a video specifically on that and covering the workflow and actually editing of this ProRes RAW down the line. So definitely stick around for that video. This new codec comes in two different flavors. There's the ProRes RAW and then ProRes RAW HQ. Regular ProRes RAW is equivalent to the image quality of a 422 image, and the ProRes RAW HQ is similar to the XQ444 ProRes option. The great thing about this new codec is that they've reworked it to have all of that information of those better ProRes codecs with the addition of raw information, and you're getting it in a smaller file size. The codec isn't resolution specific either, so it can handle footage out of the EVA1 like the 5.7K. It can also do 4K up to 120 frames per second and 2K up to 240 frames per second. All of this with the raw data and up to 12-bit color depth. Currently, this is limited to camera's outputs, but hypothetically, once a camera can output a higher bit depth, this codec should be able to handle up to a 16-bit color space. So now with all the RAW options out there, why start using ProRes RAW? Well, traditionally, RAW has been a very inefficient workflow. The files are huge, the file structures are kind of messy, especially Cinema DNG, where every single frame is a new photo, and overall, it's a really hard process for your computer to work with. So with this new combination of ProRes, which is a super user-friendly codec, especially for people who are using Macs, adds the addition of this raw data so you're able to push and pull a lot more information in your post-production workflow without having to worry about lag or delay or your computer choking up while it's trying to work with this footage. Another really good reason to use it is it actually has smaller data rates than the regular ProRes 422 or ProRes 444 and you're getting the addition of that raw data. What this means is that you get a much more manageable file size and that requires less storage space than you'd need with a traditional raw format. One last thing is that it's built by Apple, so it's optimized to work in Final Cut and on a Mac. So if you're using both of those things together, you're gonna get incredible render speeds, incredible encoding and decoding speeds, as well as exporting. So to save you time in all aspects of your post-production workflow. So now let's talk a little bit about who supports this new codec, and it is pretty limited. Currently, there's a handful of cameras, the Panasonic EVA1 and Vericam LT, the Sony FS7s, FS5, and the FS700, and then the Canon C300s, both the Mark I and Mark II, and the C500, as well as the DJI Inspire X7, which you can record internally, which is pretty fantastic. You don't need to have a separate recorder. This list will continue to grow, and by the time you're seeing this, there's probably already more cameras on this list that are able to output this data through their SDIs and give raw information to be able to record it in this new ProRes RAW format. Also something that is kind of a bummer is that the only editing software that can use this new ProRes RAW codec is Final Cut X. I think down the line there will definitely be some additions into Adobe and DaVinci and some other editing platforms, but I think Apple's gonna hold out for a little while because they're gonna wanna try and pull a lot of the people who are editing on other software over to Final Cut for all their editing needs. So when is this new codec available and when can you start using it? Well, currently there are two Atomos recorders on the market, the Shogun Inferno, as well as the Sumo 19 that you can update through some firmware that will allow you to record in this ProRes RAW, as well as their new recorder that they just announced at NAB, the Ninja 5, but this is only an HDMI recorder. Currently there are no cameras on the market that can export raw data through their HDMI, so we'll have to see where that goes down the line. So if you have either of those first two recorders that I was talking about, about with Final Cut X and any of the cameras that I listed above, then you can go out and you can start shooting and using this ProRes RAW right now. If you wanna learn more about ProRes RAW, I'm putting a link in the description below to the Apple white pages, which explains all of the technical side, gives you some numbers and some data points to look into. So definitely go and check that out if you wanna dive in a little more. And I hope you have a little bit better understanding of what ProRes RAW is and how it can help you and help your workflow. Let me know what you think about it or if you have any questions in the comments below. 
and make sure to subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.